if I say I'm sorry, that therefore means that I have to carry an increased emotional burden and emotional load in the relationship. Mm. I'm sitting here, why do I have to apologize all the time? Why do I have to come clean? Because if I don't do it, she's going to stonewall me. She's going to ignore me. She's mm. going to get pissed. She's going to yell, scream, whatever else it is. But sharing with her why it's important to you that she apologizes so you know that isn't going to happen again. <laughs> I'm sorry. When's the last time your wife actually apologized and told you she was sorry? And why don't women apologize in general? Well, that is the topic I got thrown on the table today. And that's what Tim and I are going to discuss. Why is it that women seem to not want to or choose not to apologize in relationships? <laughs> Tim, great to have you back, man. As I said before, if guys didn't listen to the previous episode, we got you back in the States. You're back at the TPM Ranch. We just had an amazing event mm. with 10 quality guys from all over the world. Uh, an epic three-day experience. And uh, now we're about to enter into our leadership retreat where everybody else is flying in today mm -hmm. from around the world. Mm. Yeah, that event was epic. <clears throat> yeah, it was. That was something else. I spoke with one of the guys this morning, just totally riding the high. He said he got home at, I think, midnight. <clears throat> and... Um, him and his wife just stayed up talking until 3.30 a.m. Oh, wow. And then uh, they just fell asleep with her her head on his chest and didn't wake up till 10 a.m. And he just said he just feels incredible. And this is one of the guys that has really struggled to win his wife back from an intimacy perspective. Yep. Over the past, uh, well, he was, and now it's totally changing. But coincidentally, going back to the previous episode about attention... We spoke about those two possibilities of what your wife can do, either seek it elsewhere or wither. His wife had withered. Mm -hmm. So he's really brought it back from that place in the past few months. So falling asleep with her head on his chest is a huge deal. Oh, huge, right? Huge deal. She's saying, I'm safe. I trust you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's huge. Um, so you brought this interesting conversation up before we hit record and you were talking about, Hey, you know, why don't women, are, and it was a very charged <laughs> response yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, share a little bit. So <clears throat> this came up a few weeks ago, um, in conversation with one of the men. And as he was sharing this, the other men were nodding their heads and there was this shared collective confusion frustration and almost feeling like a double standardness to it of yep. hey hang on a minute i'm expected to completely own my side of the street and say i'm sorry and be direct and be clear and be vulnerable and, and so on and so forth yet how come when there's an opportunity for my wife my partner who, the other person to do the same thing and say, I'm sorry. Obviously, they'll do it differently because men versus women. But nevertheless, use those two words. How come those words aren't very usually forthcoming? And I was thinking, huh, good point. Good question. Because I've heard it in the past as almost like a, a bit of a, a myth. It's like something that kind of goes around. So I started to speak to various women and ask them. Hey, do you, do you ever say I'm sorry in a relationship? And each of them basically said, uh, no. Like, okay, how come? Mm -hmm. And at first they were a little defensive. I was asking, well, what's going on in your relationship? Why do you need to say sorry? Like, it's, it's not about that. I'm genuinely curious as to what dynamic is at play here that's meaning that you want something from us, from men, that you guys aren't willing to give. And that's okay. I'm cool with polarity and all that stuff. I just want to understand it. Like what's going on? Because as a guy, when your woman doesn't say I'm sorry for something that she's clearly in the wrong for, whether it's an agreement that's been validated or whatever, it, it can be frustrating. It can definitely be <laughs> frustrating. I've called my wife out on this many times. Me too with Amelia. Yeah. Big time. So anyway, yeah, I, we could dive into the dynamics. I had to do some research, <laughs> frankly, to understand this, be it from speaking to those women and just looking up things. Um, but what I found interesting, one of the things that they said, all these women said, uh, in a slightly different way, 
but was the idea that, well, if I say I'm sorry, that therefore means that I have to carry an increased emotional burden and emotional load in the relationship. Mm. I was like, hmm, really? Yeah, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, and I want to give a little context here because there are women who do apologize. When my wife does apologize, it's a very structured apology, kind of like we teach the men to do. And it's because she's been coached to do it, right? So she'll come back and say, hey, what I said or did you know, wasn't cool, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I do call her out often. I'm like, hey, you've never freaking apologized. You know, <laughs> do you realize this? And, I, and you know me, I'll give her a hard time. Like, I'm like I, I, if I choose to go in, I go all in. And so I do think there are women out there that do it. But I, to your point, I don't think, I think a lot of men would nod their heads as I am and these other guys. It doesn't seem to happen. Now, when you say these, the increased emotional burden, are they saying that, they have to carry the weight emotionally of their wrongdoing. So therefore it's a character issue for them or something else. I think so. Yeah. And I think they're also carrying the burden of the past several decades of how they feel. And they told me this, how women were viewed in society as well. Mm -hmm. And if they then said they were sorry, because they were typically viewed as being, um, inferior in many ways mm -hmm. that it would be seen as a sign of weakness and it would add to that um, inferiority and therefore display more weakness mm. and they didn't want to be seen that way so having to try and be seen as being strong or capable or whatever so therefore an admission of guilt I'm sorry is like oh it can be a little bit of a he too too heavy to carry that burden for a character perspective, I think, yeah. Do you think there's an element, I'm listening to you as you're saying this, and I'm thinking of the women that I know and the conversations I've been privy to, is for women, men have this too, but women more than men from society and everything else, they are, in the back of their head, there's a consistent worry that they're not good enough, therefore their man will leave them and find somebody better, right? More so than men, I think. And I'm wondering if that plays in a role in here subconsciously of if they admit that they're wrong, then their quote stock, so to speak, goes down and he's going to find somebody who's right, right? Who's not flawed, so to speak. Yeah, I think that could definitely be something for sure. Um, I'm just reading through one of the points here from, from the research and it's saying that research shows that men tend to be more direct and solution focused, as we know. While women may prioritize maintaining harmony and emotional connection, which can influence their approach to apologizing. So almost, if you want to maintain harmony, that's more of a default. And this is kind of science backed. Then I'd imagine, yeah, saying I'm sorry has to then acknowledge that there's some, some disharmony that exists, mm -hmm. which can then, I guess, be scary to your point. To all the women that are listening to this, I'm going to let you know right now that that's not how it works for us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just want the occasional apology. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's interesting. I wonder if it's a little like love languages. Yeah, yeah. Right? You often give love the way you want to receive it. So I therefore wonder as a guy, do you then therefore want to receive an apology in the way that you give one? And there's that interesting tech. We were on a meeting a few months ago and um, I think we might have been talking about something similar because... I ended up going on the love languages site. Mm -hmm. and it was a test for the apology languages. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I, I can't remember the six different ways, but when I did the test, the one that ranked highly, the highest for me was taking responsibility. Yeah, you're good at that. So yeah. <clears throat> therefore, if someone's apologizing to me yep. and they're not taking responsibility, but the, I, again, I can't think of the different... In love languages, there's five different types, I think, quality time, acts of service. I'm not going to go through them all, but the same exists for the apology languages. So yeah, I wonder if... I got them right here. Yep. All right. So we got expression of regret. Okay. Explanation of what went wrong. Acknowledgement of responsibility. That's yours. You just mm -hmm. talked about. Declaration of repentance. Offer to repair or requ request for forgiveness. Mm. I wonder which one mine would be. Mm. Um, anyway, the show's not about me. So I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. I probably do them all being perfect, <laughs> as perfect as I am. <laughs> but I, So if that's the case, and we're talking about this, let's just assume 
And by the way, this is according to a study published in 2016 from Negotiation and Conflict Management Journal. Didn't even know there was a journal on that. That these are uh, the languages. Oh, this actually says the effectiveness requires these. So mm. apologies. This is not... Oh, that is the languages. So basically, Gary uh, put them into five. So Gary's the one... To, uh, Chapman wrote the five love languages. So he says, expressing regret, accepting responsibility, making restitution, generally repenting and requesting forgiveness. So he's basically taken these and rewritten them into mm. more of a book going mm -hmm. through it, um, which is really interesting. So go ahead. Especially what, when you consider it from a perspective of bids for connection. Yeah. Right. All the Gottman's work around you know, the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, essentially, that what happens in a relationship when it breaks down and signals a divorce. One of the key things is how you repair a situation mm -hmm. and um, how a couple handles that repair of a breakdown is really important, which essentially an apology and how the apology comes in, be it the whatever way of those five, ties into that, right? Because that's how you then repair the situation. And I'd be really curious to find out honestly from men how much mud they feel is left on the glass by a woman not apologizing in a way that they want to be apologized to just like for a woman oh yeah when a guy doesn't give them love in the way that they want to be loved be it quality time or attention even like we spoke about before that creates mud on the glass for them it's resentment, right? Yeah. I've definitely time. been in that. And I have a big teenager in me. So like, oh, I <laughs> it's shocking, I know. But I'll hold on to that resentment. Um, mm. And it's definitely happened in my marriage where an apology wasn't given properly, in my opinion. Um, and I'll, I'll call it out, you mm -hmm. know. And if it still isn't given, I will hold resentment to that. I don't like to admit that, but that's, that's just the truth. I, I'll stay pissed um, and have resentment come through. And eventually I'll forget about it. We'll move on. When I think about my wife and how does she handle it, it does feel like she, you know, when she doesn't follow a methodology, right? So just more naturally, she, I feel like she brushes it under the carpet, but then she tries to connect in a different way later on. Exactly what Amelia does. Yeah. And, and almost the way I think about it, what came to my mind, Tim, when we were talking about this is like a whole thing, like men are dogs, women are cats, right? You think about that. So if a dog does something wrong, it kind of quivers and comes back and almost apologizes instantly or just knows that it, it did something wrong. Mm -hmm. if but if a cat does something wrong, the cat just leaves. <laughs> cat doesn't give a fuck. Cat doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> and then eventually though, the cat might come back and purr on your lap, almost as if nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. Women seem to do something, at least my wife, seems to do something similar to that um, or analogous anyway to that. Mm. Um, it's almost like it never happened. The, the injustice that was put upon me <laughs> uh, never happened, never occurred. And, you know, but however, hey, let's watch a movie tonight together and she'll lay on my lap or what, mm. what you get what I'm saying, whatever it is. And as soon as you're intimate physically, it's, the world is good. <laughs> <laughs> All is forgiven. Maybe uh, that's why women don't apologize because they realize, well, you know, we'll just have sex later and it'll be fine. Yeah, they have the, new, yeah, they have the, the button. <laughs> yeah. Because I was going to say, I don't think real women realize the impact this can have. I don't think they realize they're doing it. I, I'd agree. Because when I spoke with those women at first, they didn't. Like, as I was asking questions, they started to realize, oh, yeah, oh. Oh, oh, we we're both learning in, the, in those conversations. Sure. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're, I also don't think, I didn't ask them this, but based on the surprise in some of their responses, I also don't think they'd been asked those questions ever in their life mm -hmm. and even considered them. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt this episode, but the reality is if you are watching or listening to this right now, then you are looking to better yourself. And I applaud you. You're one of my people. And I want to give you the opportunity of taking massive action. So if you haven't joined the activation method yet, it's our flagship program. Do what thousands of other businessmen just like you have done and take action. Be one of the one percenters that actually does the work and takes action. 
there'll be a link in the description that'll take you right to a page that'll just give you more information. There is no obligation. Just go check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. All right, let's get back to this episode. But I do believe, well, I wonder, on one hand, I feel like this is a big deal for guys, to your point, resentment, because it can certainly build. Absolutely. It can certainly feel unjust. <laughs> but on the other side, at the same time, when guys are then physically intimate, they're then going to feel the most connected too. So that resentment and the unjustness is softened somewhat. It doesn't go away though, but it, it definitely softens, at least in my experience, definitely yeah. softens. So I'm just wondering how how heavy this actually weighs on a guy over time. Think of mud on the glass. Yeah, yeah. How much mud does it actually add as a woman continues to do this? Yeah, I think it, I think it definitely happens quite a bit, right? And the guys will talk about their wives being selfish, mm. right? And I think a lot of times when they talk about their wives being selfish, this is one of the things they're talking about, mm -hmm. right? I'd agree, yeah. I'm sitting here, why do I have to apologize all the time? Why do I have to come clean? Because if I don't do it, she's going to stonewall me. She's going to ignore me. She's mm. going to get pissed. She's going to yell, scream, whatever else it is, if he doesn't apologize. There's also different needs that men have versus women. I think- we can't get away from that. We're just, we're different. The genders are different mm. species, right? Mm. Almost. We look at that in the animal kingdom, anywhere else, and humans are animals, right? We we look at the, the male species different than we look at the female species. But for some reason in our society, we just say, oh, men and women are equal. Well, we're not. We, we should have maybe equal opportunities or other things, but we're not. Men are physically stronger than women. Of course, mm -hmm. not all, but most. And it's just a natural thing because we have more testosterone, more opportunity for that. Now we know this. We're looking at this. We're like, oh, wow, it's true. Like, I didn't know that, every, that this applied to all women. I just thought it was just my wife, honestly. I thought, wow, Aaron. I thought the same about Amelia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a, I never thought to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I had all kinds of very nice thoughts go through my head when, when I think of it. So now as men, what are some things that we could do with this revelation to help ourselves out? Well, just again, looking through this research, you've mentioned a few of them. Um, and I think it does come down to recognizing and just acknowledging the fact there's gender differences, mm -hmm. right? And if we acknowledge that, we can leverage them. And one of the practical tips, number one, encourage open communication, which, you know, in my experience, still doesn't necessarily get the words, I'm sorry. Yep. Because of the gender differences. And, the, and again, just looking at the research here, it says because of, the gender differences in communication styles, societal and cultural influences, which those are the expectations that society has on a woman can impact the willingness to apologize, even if you create that safe space. And also the third piece within that research was uh, the emotional labor within the apology. That, so recognizing that for a woman to apologize, it can often carry a high degree of emotional labor. So that first idea according to this, of a guy could encourage open communication, for sure. It's always going to help. It's never going to work against you. Don't think it's going to be effective. No. Or maybe one in 10 times it might be. But the second one, recognizing nonverbal apologies. Yeah. Um, which <clears throat> that's definitely Amelia's method and sounds like it's Erin's sometimes too. And then the third point is I don't think this one works, so sorry about this, but modeling apologetic behavior. Yeah. Um, I agree. <laughs> just yeah. throw that one out. Yeah. So I think you still get to do that, right? 100%. 100%. I think you get to do all these, all three of these, encourage open communication. Yep. Recognize nonverbal apologies um, and model apologetic and just understand the undercurrent here. Because if we are going to agree that there's gender differences and we are going to agree that society, both genders have been through a journey over the past however many decades through society, therefore there have been different cultural norms and expectations played on, uh, placed upon men and women, then maybe this is just a thing. It could be a biological thing too. Yeah, maybe this is just part of what it means to be a woman and the world you've grown up in and saying those words and accepting that burden is just a little too much. So as men, are we okay with that? And do we want to just recognize the nonverbal ways and, and appreciate them? Would that make life easier? I think so. 
I think it would too. And I've coached guys through versions of this, Tim, not with a specific subject, but basically the idea of, you know, if your kid does something wrong, you don't always have to have them apologize like they're a child. Mm. And so you just don't let it roll off your back. Like just don't sweat it, right? Mm. Just don't sweat it. And mm -hmm. I think as men, we get to do, we get the chance to do that. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff mm. at the end of the day. So that's obviously one. The other thing that came to mind when you were saying that is, okay, open communication. And I was like, okay, do guys really know what that looks like and how to address it, you know, to openly communicate? And so what that could look like in my mind's eye, right off the top of my head without thinking about it, is you could go to your wife and say, hey, look, you know, you cutting me down in front of the kids is it won't work, right? And what I need you to do is just actually take time to apologize so you under so I know that you understand what happened won't work for our family or won't work for me. I need to actually hear you say the words I'm sorry, otherwise it's not going to land for me, and I'm going to carry that on the anger and upset on moving forward. Mm. So it's a very direct way, and then you could also throw in something like, "Look, I'm not going to hold this against you. I'm you know, this isn't about you as a character flaw. This is about just the action. And for me, I just need to hear." an authentic apology. Mm. I mean, the guys listening to this podcast, even I'm thinking about myself as well. If I'm aware of some of the dynamics and the burdens, I can then use them to my advantage by validating her concern about apologizing prior to asking, making the request. Yep. Right. The other thing as well, again, when I was speaking to these women, I'm like, why is it that you want us guys <clears throat> to be, direct and take responsibility and ownership when we apologize is it because you want to know that we realize what we did wasn't okay and you want us to change behavior in order to change that particular behavior we need to see it recognize it own it for it to change and therefore that then makes you feel more emotionally safe or seen or whatever and they said yes i'm like okay cool got it well, I think the same is is true for guys, for women. If that instance of you know speaking to me a certain way in front of the kids, you know, we hear that a lot from the guys, right? Mm -hmm. I think asking for the the apology in that scenario by validating the concern the woman may have around apologizing, but sharing with her why it's important to you that she apologizes, so you know that isn't going to happen again, and what that then provides you with could also go somewhere. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's going to work. <laughs> it could go some way in getting that apology. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely love it. So what? Give us, leave, leave these guys with one action step. What would you tell a guy right now? I would tell them to recognize the nonverbal apologies, honestly. Yeah. I think your advice of letting it roll off the back and don't split the small stuff is, is really important. Um, I'm assuming the guys have healthy boundaries in place. All the guys you know, we work with, that's a big thing for them. They're very good. They get very good at creating and maintaining healthy boundaries. I think when they're in place, the need for the need to hear I'm sorry becomes less and less because mm -hmm. you just know who you are, you know what you stand for. It doesn't really matter and it enables you to not sweat the small stuff as, uh, as easily. So yeah, I'd look, recognize the nonverbal apologies and appreciate them and just, Trying to sweat the small stuff. Yeah, I'm going to leave them with one more if I can. Is I think what I'm going to do, um, and I think what guys could do, is be like, "Hey, I heard this really interesting podcast." You know, if guys, if you see this happening, on that women have different ways of apologizing than men, mm. do you find that to be true? Right, not an accusation conversation, but kind of like you did with these other women. Like, hey, I'm seeking to understand. Mm -hmm. Do you find that to be? women, you know, different and see what your wife says. She's probably never thought of it, right? And if anything, this gives you guys an interesting connected conversation to mm -hmm. have where you can form intimacy, not physical, but that can end up that way, but you can get more intimate by knowing each other better. And you'll walk out of this conversation if you do it right and you guys are in a good place with knowing how each other actually receives apologies. Mm, that's right. a great one. You could even take that test. Yep, you could take that test, which I'll be taking. You know, I'm still trying to figure out which way I do it. I'll mm. be interested to see what, what comes up with, because I feel like I do a lot of those in that list. But like the five love languages, there's probably one I do it predominantly. Yeah, there will be. Well, that's all. 
Awesome. Thanks for bringing this topic. It's a great yeah, conversation. Yeah, thank you. Gentlemen, as we always say in the moment of insight, take massive action. So there will be a link in the description for you as well. Make it work. Have that conversation. Or to Tim's point, just look for the nonverbal apologies. Look for them. And not just from women. I'm sure men do them too, right? But look for them to see. And the last thing is just don't sweat the small stuff. I remember reading a book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. It's all small stuff in my 20s. Recommend that it is all small stuff. At the end of the day, focus on what you want, what you desire, so you can move in the direction of a powerful man. Guys, take some action. We'll see you next time on the TPM Show.